can we Africanize feminism? That's really the conversation. Is it possible for us to have a good blend? Or are we even ready for it? Do you think it makes sense for us to be fighting this battle? So if somebody said feminism is already a failed ideology in Nigeria, I'd like to speak to that person. What that person means. Feminism is a failed ideology in Nigeria. I'd like, I'd like uh, Mary to address that for me. Um, that's the problem. This is you, Uni Abuja Connect. Mary, are you back? Mary, can you hear me? Yeah, I see your network or mine. I think it's yours, your end, because you, you got cut off, yes. Is it your network or mine? I think it's yours. I think it's yours. Because oh. I'm still connected. The oh, messages really? are still coming in. Yes, the messages are still coming in. Oh. Wait, can you, you can hear me, though. There's somebody that says Very well. Fem feminism is already a failed ideology in Nigeria. The toxic approach to it kills its original purpose. And that, I think, is the perspective of many Nigerians. And that, that, if we leave this conversation without addressing that, toxic, that to toxicity of feminism, the fact that we need to compartmentalize what people are thinking. So you told us about the angry birds. Yes, we've understood that they are angry birds. Now, those of us who are not angry birds, but that we are being objective, are we saying that what, what feminism means to us is just treating every human being like human, right, with equality? Not yeah. we're doing that, but still respecting some parts of our culture that appreciates the hierarchy in a home, which means that the men are, are the leaders in the houses. Because that's really what, what the African man is always confused about. And I really want us to leave this conversation addressing that. So let us leave the angry birds and focus on what the real feminists who have the African consciousness, what they define feminism really as. I'd like you to help us with that. I, I don't know how, you know, African feminism, I read somewhere, it says African feminism basically voices, um, you know, the realities of women in varying um, African countries. So what these women are clamoring for, women, women's needs, um, the real Clear at your end? I can hear you, yes, Come. Clear, very clear. So women's needs, reality, oppression, and you know, empowerment are, are best addressed by having an inclusive and you know a more accommodating understanding of the general uh, public and uh, maybe a more a more general issue as well as peculiarities. We just we just have to understand uh, our individual peculiarities. It's very, very important. Like I said earlier, I do not when I when when people canvass for feminism, they are not they are not in any way trying to be men. Why would why would a beautiful me want to want to be a man? I don't understand. A man, a man. A, I, I even feel sorry for some men sometimes. The way they, I mean, a man who deals with a lot of sacrifices and sometimes like they just even laying their own life for everybody else, you know. So feminism is not. You, you don't want to be a man, but you just want the men to understand that. You're not clamoring to be in their, you know, take over their space. But it's really about um, wanting to have, see that woman as a human being first. Honestly, if you can see her first as a human being and not a subject, a subhuman inferior to you, this is where the problem is. A woman is not inferior to a man. Bible said that. In, even in Bible story of creation, let us make man in our own image. When he digressed downwards, he now said, he, he created man in his image and likeness and went on to say, male and female, he created them. What does that tell you? It's a kind of joint heir to God. So when we now come and a human being want to be superior to another human being, is where the problem is. But women okay. are not even interested in that. I don't think feminists, feminists are not even interested. In what they're saying is that I want to be the governor of my state. Allow me be the governor. Mm. I want to be the president of Nigeria. It's my right to. 
I want to be able to, uh, if you, you, Mariah, you can decide to be a godmother. Men are having godfathers. You don't hear of godmothers. <laughs> Women, their own problems are too many. Yeah. You don't hear, oh, this woman is my godmother. No. We are still struggling. We haven't even got women in politics that can so act the role me, of a godmother. Can we then focus on that? You see, that's, that's my own summation to you today. Can we, as women in Nigeria, focus on getting that political equality? When we do that, it might take a while, just like it did in the, in the, abroad. It took them years, mm -hmm. 19th and 20th century, before they finally got that political equality. When we get that political equality, we have the posture to now be demanding mm -hmm. this, this social equality or cultural change that we're demanding. But it's too, it's, that's why we're putting the cart before the horse. Imagine if we had, out of 36 governors, we had 20, governors, we had 20 or 15 that are women. How would you, how then, would you get? How would I get? I didn't get that. How, yeah. did, how would I get? So, okay, you give, so I was saying that if we, first of all, take it in steps, where our focus as Nigerian women is to get that political equality, where all our fight, all our ammunition is to get that political equality first. It might take us 15, 20 years. Once that is done, we now be begin, because then it will change the psyche, the, 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 the posture of even the Nigerians, even the men. You realize that these women are actually very, very now, they're important, they're governors. They're Madam, they're Madam Governors here, Madam Chancellor here, Madam Council, Madam, you know. So they, with how our, our role in society changes. And when you do that, you now become to gradually, subconsciously begin to change the psychological perception of why, how they see us. So when we now demand of equality in certain areas, it is understandable. But right now, it's hard to conceive when we are, we are not, we are still in the other room. So that's what I'm saying. Don't we feminists just need to retrace our steps in Africa and take it one by one first before just shouting you know? this social equality that's screaming? Let me, let me come let you go ahead. Go ahead, Mary. Can you hear me, Mary? Oh, I think I'm stuck again. I can hear you. Uh, I can ahead. hear you. But Go ahead. I can hear you, but it's a bit uh, cracky. But, but you know, uh, Morayo, like I said earlier, I don't know who will vote for these women, first of all. You see, it's like the work we do at uh, Emerge Women, where we help Nigerian women to win political offices. And uh, it's a tough work. So you see a man who is rooting for a female candidate for governorship. His fellow men are labeling him already. He say, you don't know anything. You are, you are campaigning for a woman. Eh? They point you well, a man, you are campaigning for a woman to be your governor. Then you have to also get the husband, spouses of these females to begin to plan and learn how to be first gentlemen of the state, right? Without having to deal with you know, cynical comments from their fellow me, me, men who feel uh, a woman is... So, so this society doesn't even want a woman to lead. But the truth is that the work we do at Emerge Women is definitely bringing up a lot more women to the political space. So when we don't get elected, when, the, when we don't get to be on the table through election, we can also demand for the national policy uh, on gender policy that gives 35% affirmative action to women. And work right. is going on, honestly, Mariah. People, people I, I mean, in the last election, I know the amount of work myself and my team put into monies to get more women into elective and appointed position, you know? So we can do it, but maybe our great-grandchildren will probably be the ones um, occupying that space, but this is the time to do the work. You know, and it has to also take a collaborative effort of men and women. <laughs> Maybe 50 years or 100 years to come, but not now. Because yeah. it's a very long way with the, the way people think. The mindset, the mindset is even sometimes, it's not even the legal framework sometimes. It's not even the uh, 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 institutional barriers. Sometimes it's even the mindset of these women we, if you come out now, Moriah, to run election, you will be shocked that your greatest uh, people that won't vote for you are, are women sometimes. So this is what feminism does. It's trying to, you know, cite the women to change their mindset and also make them to begin to utilize their population, turning your population to resource. 
very important because if we can turn this population that we have as women to a resource, we will be winning elections in this country. Okay, that's we have, it. <laughs> we'll be wrapping up soon, but there's somebody that sent a snide comment there that women like Alison Brown. So because one woman goes goes south, they always automatically assume that all women like they give up. That women like Alison Madwike. Somebody just sent a snide comment now. Like, is it like women like Alison Madwike? The point is that they always they always use that against us. Because maybe one woman goes left or maybe she does something and then they say, oh, if you give all of them an opportunity, they are just, they are all the same. Oh, see Alice Madike, oh, see Patricia Ete, see, uh, what's that other woman? All sorts of women, they start listing all the women that allegedly <laughs> committed crimes. But you see, I want you to help me address this because we're not, we're, they, make, they, make, they make it look as if they're giving us something, you know? Like they're giving yeah. us opportunity. Yeah. I want you to address it's, it's, that. It's, it is called tokenism. It is tokenism. That's, that's really what it is in the political space right now. That women, like on political parties, we say we are giving women form for free. And yeah. some say, okay, we give women 50% form. And honestly, women are better managers of resources. Any man will tell you that. Any decent real man will tell you that. More women manage resources better even the way they run the homes. And they do not also fail when you put them in the decision-making table. Women just work very hard to, and, and when women make policies, this is why we need women in, on the table. See, when women make policies, the woman is a nurturer by nature. So when she's making policy, her policy will have the human face in it. Is thinking about the youth, is thinking about the children, is thinking about everybody but herself. So when we make policy, that's why you need more women in policy making. Um, those who mentioned Deziani and the rest of them, Deziani is not the most, I don't even know if, how corrupt she is, but the truth is that all these things are blown out of proportion because she's a woman. And the media themselves are never fair to the woman. If there have been 10 ministers for... Uh, um, petroleum in this country. The Zani is the least corrupt among them. She's the least corrupt among them. But it's just sad that, you know, we just have this narrative and social construct that just have a way of making the woman look like willy willy. But, it's, but we are used to that. It's also a strategy to continue right. to put the woman in that box, you know. We, we, we have to run off, Mary, but I want to ask this final okay. question. Um, when more married, more women. Let me let me be careful. Choose my words carefully because when a single woman um, or a, a young lady fights this battle of feminism or talks about it, she's immediately judged. Oh, a single mother. Oh, she doesn't have a husband. Oh, she doesn't you know what does she know? Or she's you know until she gets married, and then the married woman now speaks about feminism and like ah, I'm sure she's the one that is a she's the man in the house. She's the one that you know. There's this definition society puts on us. So women are even scared of identifying with the cause. They don't want to be labeled as ah, either single mother or labeled as the, you know. So what can we do to change that perception? So that every woman can get on board with this, with this. Not every woman and man can get on board with feminism. Well, you know, sometimes some, some people who are close to me and know they know me up to the home. Uh, when they see me in my home and how we run my home, they just say, oh, no, you're not feminist enough, right? Yeah. And I laugh. <laughs> and then I laugh, you know. But the truth is that whether a woman, you see, it is still that stereotyping. When a man, when a woman is single, she carries some burden of all the singles in the world, even the men who are single, are not judged, you see? These are some of the imbalances we're talking about, you see? And then... When and, and then even our culture prefers a woman to be a virgin before getting married, you see? But nobody talks about the man. And, and sometimes I'm often confused around how a woman is going to be virgin when it takes two people. You, you know what I mean? If the guy is also a virgin, you will have all women virgin. But you can't continue to have men soaring their royal oats and living their lives and expect, or they are living that life with somebody, a woman, a young girl, a single girl, you know? Yeah. So it's, um, it's an unfair and an unequal world. So we should always push for 
addressing these cultural and historical imbalances amongst us that impedes on our humanity so that we can create a more lovable, a more just, and a more equal society. Right. And I tell you what, Nigeria will be better for it. Right. Right. Nigeria will be better for it. The country develops better when they use the potentials, the talent. Look at how talented you are, Morayo. Imagine if there's no Morayo here uh, leading the team at uh, our view. Do you yeah. know what? We have shortchanged ourselves. We've you know, shortchanged the country. So Morayo. it is very important. Yeah? Mr. Guys, Mr. Guys, about shut us off now because we don't want our. Well, please don't go anywhere. <laughs>